What is up guys, Fahir here from awesometoots.com. In our previous video, we added touch controls in our game and we moved our zombie by using touch controls. And we saw that on mobile. Let us now add buttons to our game and move him by using those buttons. So first of all, I'm going to take the ground and the zombie and move them a little bit up, something like this, because we're going to add our buttons at our corners. And by the way, you can download this complete project and the new assets, which are our UI elements right here. So you can download them, link is in the description below. What I'm gonna do now is I'm going to right click in the hierarchy panel and go under UI and create a button. Before I proceed to do anything, I'm going to take the canvas and go here from screen space overlay to screen space camera. And I'm going to attach our main camera right here. I'm going to set the scale mode to screen size 1280 by 720. And I've talked about this in my previous videos. What is the canvas? What is the camera? What is the screen space overlay? So on and so forth. So for our button, I am going to remove the text. And one thing that you can notice is that we don't see our button. We don't see it anywhere on the screen. The reason for it is the rendering or the sorting layers. So our zombies and our moons, they are on the sorting layer default. And our canvas is as well on the sorting layer default. But we want our canvas to be on top of our other sprites, such as the zombie and the background. So I'm going to simply set the order in, in layer 2. And voila, we are good to go. If you don't know what I'm talking about, sorting layer, order in layer, go and watch my video about rendering order in Unity. And I'll pop, probably put it in the description below so that you can watch it as well. So this button, I'm going to rename it to left and I'm going to set here, let's say 150 by 150, which is going to be the width and the height. And I'm going to position it at the bottom left corner. Now pay attention here when I select this UI element in the hierarchy and go here in the inspector and click on this rectangle right here, this cube, which is the anchor it determines the anchor right here so when i click on it you see here we have anchor presets and the anchors will determine at which well anchor will our ui element be so for example here if i hold shift alt and command so shift or actually just shift and alt and you will see here it is displaying here these pivots and positions using our anchor presets if i click here at the bottom left corner it is going to position my button right away at the bottom left corner i'm going to duplicate the button once and duplicate it twice and the first one is going to be the right button and this one is going to be our jump button and for the jump button click on the presets right here so the anchor presets hold shift and alt and simply click on the right bottom or bottom right corner here in the presets which is going to move them automatically right there so going back here in our UI, I'm going to go into the PNG folder and yellow one and I want the back button or button back. I'm going to select all three of these. So left jump and right and select the button back and simply drag and drop it in their sprites. So first of all, taking the right button, I need to reposition it here, but I also need to rotate it. So let me go here and I'm going to rotate it on the Z axis. Let's say 180 and voila, we're good to go. And let me just reposition it here a little bit up and voila. So the position for the X is 317 and for the Y 150 because I have rotated to demonstrate that this is the right button. For the jump button, I also need to rotate it. I'm gonna rotate it negative 90 degrees and move it a little bit here. So like this and voila. So X is negative 154. And this is how this looks like in our game view. So what do we need to do now? Well, first of all, we're going to go here inside of our code. We're not gonna do any coding here. I already coded everything. I added a couple of variables and I'm gonna talk about that right now. So I added the jump force, which we will add to make our player jump or the zombie jump. We have here the move left, don't move and can jump. So this here is gonna determine if we're gonna move left and right. So determine if we move left or right. 
This right here is going to determine if we are moving or not. So determine if we are moving or not. And here we will test if we can jump. Now, why do we need to test if we can move left or right and also if we can move at all? Well, first of all, if we are not moving, we need to play the idle animation. If we are moving, we will play the walk animation. And we need to know in which direction we are moving. So move left here. And as you can see, I have created this function called handle move me, moving, not movement, handle moving, which is in the update. It is called in the update. And basically here, if don't move, so if we are not moving, stop moving. And here, as you can see in the stop moving, we simply stop the animation and we well stop the velocity as well. So if we don't move, if we are not moving, then we're going to stop the movement. Else we will test if we're moving left or if we are moving right. And notice here, let me just separate these so that we can see it more clearly. If move left is true, we will move the player to the left side. And we explained these functions right here. So these are the previous functions. I already tagged them here. So we explained all of these and you should know what they are. Ignore this right here. I will come to it. So don't worry about that. So if we are moving left, if this is true, then we will move left. If move left is not true, then we will move right. And notice the exclamation mark. It will make what's after it the opposite. So if move left is equal to true, the exclamation mark will make it the opposite, which is false. And if our move left is false, the exclamation mark will make it the opposite, which is true. So what do we need here? You see here we have allow movement and don't allow movement and we have jump function. So what we are going to do? Well, for our jump function, it is simple. We are simply going to go here and we are going to select the jump button. And here for the on click, so now in the inspector panel, when you select the button in the on click, you see list is empty. We're simply going to click the plus sign here and drag and drop the zombie as the game object and go here for these functions, player walk and here simply select the jump function. So simple like that. And this means that when we press this button, the jump function, which is in the player walk script, it will be called. And it's a script right here that we will simply add to its velocity. So here we are gonna, not going to touch the X velocity. We are simply going to add to the Y velocity. And if we test it out now, if I go here and test it out, you see we're jumping. You see jump and jump and jump, we're jumping. And if I jump more times, we see we're jumping until the, well, zombie is out of screen. Well, for that, we have this variable right here, can jump. And notice here we are testing if on collision enter, if we are colliding with the ground and I have added to the ground, so select the ground, I've added the tag ground and I'm testing here in my code, if on collision enter, this is a function that you use to test if two objects are touching each other. In our case, the zombie is standing on the ground, which means he, are, he is touching the ground and we need colliders for that. So you see the ground has a collider. And if I go in the scene, you see this green thing, you see this green thing, greening or circling or cubing this cube or whatever, how you're going to call it, circling it. This green thing is called a collider. If I select the zombie, you see he also has a collider, this green thing around him. And if I go here, you will see box collider 2D. And in order to detect collision when two colliders touch each other, we use on collision enter. And it has a parameter collision. And if that collision game object tag is equal to the ground, can jump is true, which means we are standing on the ground. Can jump is true. On collision exit is when two objects don't touch each other anymore. So we don't touch each other. We exit from the collision. And if the game object that we have exited from the collision is the ground. So game object that has a tag ground, that means we are not standing on the ground anymore. Can jump is equal to false. So simply what we need to do here in our jump function is that we need to test if can jump. Now we are going to add velocity to our game object. If I go back here in Unity and let me just go in my game tab 
And if I hit the play button now, notice I press here the button, so I'm gonna press it now. And come on, is the game running? So hit the play button. For some reason, after, I believe it's after Unity uh, 2017, every time you save something in the script, it takes a little bit of time for Unity to compile all of that and load it so that you can use it in the editor. That's why when I press the play button, it did not actually do anything. So if I jump now, you see we are jumping, but if I jump multiple times, it's not working. It's only jumping once. So it's only jumping once, voila. So this is for our jump button and this works pretty nice, but for our left button, for example, if I go here, click on the plus sign and if I attach here my zombie, go for the function, player walk and I select allow movement. You see here, allow movement. It takes a Boolean as a parameter. I'm going to make it checked because here in our allow movement, let me just find it here. In allow movement, we have a Boolean parameter and we're setting that Boolean parameter to move left. If it's checked here, so if it's checked, you see here this checkbox and let me just quickly highlight that for you. So here I've attached the game object here is attached and here is the function that is selected to load and here is the checkbox this checkbox is for the parameter of this function so this function allow movement has a boolean parameter if it's checked it will pass true to that parameter which means this right here will be true and we are going to set it to be equal to move left so if move left is true you see we will move left and also here we don't move, we set it to be equal to false because if don't move is true, then we will stop moving. If it's false, then we go inside of the else statement and we test if we move left or move right. So passing here, checking the checkbox, it will make it true. But if I go back here in Unity now, and if I, well, simply press play here, you see nothing is happening. You see now I have released it and now we are moving and this is all messed up and it does not work like this. So what do we need to do? First of all, select here, this right here, select this uh, on click that we added and click on the minus here. Notice here when I click on the plus button, so if I take the highlight tool, when you click on the plus button here, it will add a field where you can add a game object and select the function. But when you select that field and you click the minus sign right next to the plus, it will remove it and you cannot add it anymore. So how can we fix this? Well, actually we need to add here an event trigger component on our button. So click on add component and filter for the event trigger. So event trigger component, filter for it. So click on again, add component, filter for event trigger, add that on the left button. And notice here we have add new event type. When I click on the add new event type, you see here we have pointer enter, pointer exit, pointer down, up, so on and so forth. What is going on here and what do we need? Well, this pointer down, so when I selected pointer down, this right here again creates where I can add and attach my game object. We will do that in a second, but pointer down means it will detect when we press and hold our button. So when we press and hold the button, the function that we now attach here, so I'm gonna drag and drop the zombie and I'm gonna select here player walk and I'm gonna say allow movement and I'm going to hit the checkbox. So now when we press and hold the left button, this right here will be fired. If I hit the play button now and if I press and hold, you see now we are moving. If I release, well, nothing is happening because when we press and hold, we set our movement. So allow movement, we set it to, well, to be equal to true because I've checked this trigger or this checkbox. So I've checked it to be true. And here the don't move will be false. And we are gonna go inside of the else statement, which means that we need to go here and add another event type. So click here, add new event type. And this one is going to be pointer up. So pointer down will detect when we press and hold the button and pointer up will detect when we release the button. So here we have the same game object. So we have the zombie again and here for the function, we are gonna go in player walk and we're gonna say don't allow movement. So don't allow movement 
here, it's simply gonna set don't move to true, which will make it here true and we will stop moving. This is what we are doing. So if I go back, hit the play button, if I try or press the left button, you see we're moving, I release it, we stop moving. If I just press it and release it right away, he simply moves a little bit, you see? Just a little bit, just a little bit, like the song for 50 Cent, just a little bit. Anyways, we need to do the same thing for our right button. So I'm gonna go here, filter for the event trigger, add pointer down, add pointer up, and click on these lists, attach the zombie script here, attach the zombie script here. Here for the pointer up, we are gonna select don't allow movement, and for the pointer down, we are going to select player walk, allow movement, but we are not gonna check the trigger. We are not gonna check this checkbox right here. So this checkbox, let me just take the highlight tool. The checkbox here for the right button, you see the right button, it's gonna be unchecked. Because again, I told you, the allow movement has or takes a Boolean parameter. If we check it, it will pass true to that para parameter. If we don't check it, it will pass false. Which means when it pass false here, this right here will be true, so it will be false, and exclamation mark will make it true, bam, and then we will move right. So let's test it out. If I hit the play button, and if I start moving, you see here we're moving to the right, and if I press here, we're moving to the left, and if I jump, we are jumping. Now I'm not gonna test this on mobile because this works as well. We can press these buttons on mobile. You can test it out, same way as I showed you in the previous video about our touch controls. So basically just attach your mobile device as I explained in the previous video and well, well, simply test, click on the buttons and it will work 100%. So don't worry about that. Again, briefly, what we did here is for our left or actually for the jump button, we simply attach the function right away by, well, clicking the plus button for the on click event trigger parameter or actually for the on click listener that is. And here for the right and the left, we attached event triggers. So we have pointer down and pointer up. Again, pointer down is when we press and hold the button. Pointer up is when we release that same button. So when we press and hold, we will allow the movement and we have it here and we have the checkbox checked, which will pass true here. So it will pass true. It will make move left true and we will move left because it's true here and we will well, call the move left function. And when we release it, we will call don't allow movement. You see here, don't allow movement, this one right here, we will call it when we release the button. Same thing for the right button, but except for the checkbox, it is not checked for the right button because again, I've explained the don't or allow movement takes a Boolean parameter. If this is not checked, it will pass false to that parameter, which here it will make it false. So move left is false. And here we will evaluate this is true and we will move to the right side. So again, let me just run and demonstrate this. If I hit here the jump button, we are jumping. If I press the button here, we are moving and here we are moving. Voila, this is how we can use buttons and we did not have to write any code to detect these event triggers and we can do that and probably the next video will be about that, how we can do the same thing as we did here but with our code instead of using here event triggers. Anyways, Fahir here from awesome2.com, download this complete project and uh, download these asset files for that pr complete project so that you can follow along and watch the video. And uh, I will see you guys in the next video.